her joie de vivre, smiling eyes, and appetite for success define this diva. Six successful restaurants, three published books, two TV shows, the one and only Ritu Dalmia. <laughs> Thank you so much for My being pleasure. here. Uh, you are one busy bee, so I really, really appreciate your you know, time. I'm an attention seeker. <laughs> All right, so anywhere where there's an opportunity to get some attention, like the way you just introduced me, you think I was going to say no to that? <laughs> no, not happening. You know, I have to confess, I am a big foodie, so I am okay. so excited to be talking to you. And so I'm there'll be a test after this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> sure, I mean, I'll, I'll eat. It's not like my knowledge, but I just love to eat. Okay. I have to say that going out for a meal is is not about just eating anymore. It's Was about, it ever? So now it's about passion, it's about romance, it's about conversations, celebrations. Uh, why did you get into this field? You know, at the end, there might be passion, there may be romance, there may be just the idea of going out. But eating out is still about eating out. It's still <laughs> about so? food. It's still <laughs> about food. I mean, you can have the most beautiful looking restaurant, you can have amazing furniture, gorgeous waitresses and beautiful looking waiters. But if the product is not good, it ain't happening, darling. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Absolutely. So, uh, coming back, why did I get into it? I don't know. I really don't know because I think I just thought I knew it all. I was always a big brag. Uh, so I still remember I was 21 year old, I was working in my father's company and every time I used to go out for a meal with my friends, I said, oh, this is not the way it should be, you know, I know it all and I've traveled okay. so much and this. I said, if you think you know it all, why don't you open a restaurant? <laughs> and you know what? I said, you guess what, guys? That's what I'm going to do. And three months later, I opened my first restaurant, Mezzaluna. An absolute failure. So I don't even want to talk about <laughs> it, okay? <laughs> but everything I've done in my life has been on impulse. So opening a restaurant for me was also an impulse. When I was a kid, I mean, my dream was to be this fancy industrialist with a pink private jet plane who would go from mm -hmm. one meeting to another with a little secretary hanging behind and a <laughs> cell phone and that. That didn't happen, you see? It's so instead I happen. became a bower chief. <laughs> so. It was just an impulsive decision and what a fabulous decision it was. Well, you know, you started at such a young age, 21, 22. How did people take you seriously? I opened my first restaurant when I was 21. But, you know, I'm a good Marwadi girl. And Marwadis don't waste time over all this <laughs> education. <laughs> right. And becoming a pediatric surgeon and becoming a doctor. <laughs> and, you know, so many years in medical college, paisa bhi kharaab ho raha hai, aur time bhi kharaab hai. Okay, so I said just get into it as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. In fact, talking about it, there's a very funny story I have to tell you. When the first restaurant after my first failure, Diva opened in 2000 it was. And when a restaurant opens, you have to wait for a credit card machine till all your things in order. So we had 30,000 rupees sale that we did that day. And super excited. And my younger sister who's here as well, uh, she was helping me in the restaurants that day. And my partner, who was a good Punjabi girl, you know, so at the end of the night, we have this 30,000 rupees and we have to do all the counting and all. So she sits there and she puts 100 rupee note, second 100 rupee <laughs> note and makes bundles of tens. Whilst my younger sister and me, Mickey, we sat there and we were counting money like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> it just came naturally. It's in my genes. <laughs> so, so it just happened. You know, many people don't know the unglamorous side of the restaurant business and, you know, how hard it is to run a kitchen. Is there a glamorous side? Yeah. Yes, for us. Is to there come. unglamorous? Absolutely. There, there is nothing glamorous about the restaurant. The best thing about the restaurant business, for me at least, is I've met some of the nicest people mm -hmm. who I know in my life through my restaurants. But glamour? If you call grimy faces, sweaty underarms, uh, stinking hands, which you can't get rid of, the smell of fish from your hands for days and days and days, abusive language. Oh my God, if you hear what I talk but, about. But uh, yeah, now, you use it or get, it gets uh, thrown at you. Do I? No, I'm asking. You have to, <laughs> sweetheart, no one throws it at me. I throw <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. And long hours. 
absolutely anti-social life. No holidays. No holidays. So there is nothing glamorous about it. But saying that, there's a book called Kitchen Confidential. I don't know if anyone of you have read it. You guys have read it. Anthony Bodwan, he says something very mm -hmm. exciting in it. He says, when someone asks me what are the things I hate about my job, I say the long hours, the anti-social life, the heat, the sweat, the pressure, uh, no holidays, and give me a bottle of wine and ask me what are the things I love about my job. The heat, the sweat, the <laughs> anti-social hours, <laughs> right. the law. So that's it. It's the most addictive business in the world. In fact, when any, anyone comes for an interview, I say, do you have a life? If you have a life, don't work for me. Because once mm. you start working in the restaurant business, that totally takes over everything else and there is no place for nothing else so many women and i think many of us over here including myself you know everybody aspires to open a restaurant or open a cafe someday you know it's like this romantic idea that's how it started with right. me. So, <laughs> um you know i, I just want to know you know to give some practical advice to every aspiring restauranter um you know, when do you know to call it quits when things go bad okay uh Call it quits is very simple. If the restaurant does not work in the first 12 months, it'll never work. It's the riskiest business in the world. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the world, not even banks lend money to restaurants because the success rate is 3%. And when a restaurant fails, it's a complete washout. There is no salvage value in that restaurant. So you will know in the first 12 months whether it's going to work or not. And to keep on holding on to it, is going to wipe out your entire capital because the costs which really kill a restaurant is the rent, electricity, right. and the salaries. It's a very tough job for people who also run homes because running home is a full-time job. Children are a full-time job. And restaurants are like children. 16 hours, 18 hours, no holidays. So you don't have a life. And on the other side on of the other, things. So, so what I'm saying is just don't do it. <laughs> make well, I'm make life to, easier, guys. I'm trying to turn this around. You know, on the other side of things, you, you've made it work. You've made it happen. And so looking back, you know, what pieces of advice would you give? It's given me so much satisfaction. If you love food, the two things that makes a good restaurant, in my opinion, and I think I'm fairly a decent one, once is your love for the product, which is obviously food here. And second, there has to be a generosity in your spirit. If you are a good hostess, if you like having guests at home, if there's a thrill about it, if you like feeding people, you're going to be good at a restaurant business. If, mm -hmm. rest if when you have guests at home and you say, shit, who's going to clean up after this? Don't do it. I've been to several fine dining European restaurants all over India. And they open up being very authentic and they create a certain standard and you can't even ask for salt at the table. But then a couple of months down the line, you'll just see the bottles of Tabasco, ketchup, everything oh, right Jesus. there. And I've seen that, you know, what do you think about that? Don't talk about Tabasco and ketchup. It's a, <laughs> it's a huge problem I have between my boys at my restaurant and now till date. So many years and even now every day. Madam, who ketchup guest mangra kya kare? Mangra se. No, it's not about ketchup. I love ketchup. Give me a hot dog with ketchup right. and mustard, and I'm very happy. I don't want my food to be served with ketchup or Tabasco or even mustard for that matter. So I'm, I'm going to open a burger place soon, and there'll be loads of ketchup okay. there. All right. You send them all there. <laughs> I'm the sort of non-vegetarian who can walk into a restaurant and order a vegetarian main course. So, you know, when I went to Diva many years ago, I think it was eight years ago, yeah, with, with, my, Mrs. with Mrs. my family, yes. uh, I ordered a delicious veg gnocchi dish and my hosts were mortified that I ordered, why are you wasting, you know, the main course veg, you should have the lamb chops, you know, they were really quite mortified. So, but, but I know that you want to put vegetables in the spotlight and you've just released a new book. You can't escape your roots. You can't mm -hmm. escape your DNA. And I was born in a vegetarian family. I grew up as a vegetarian, but of course, I've always been those slimy, you know, sleazy types who <laughs> sneak to their friend's restaurant to eat, you know, homes to eat salami for breakfast. <laughs> uh, and for years, no one knew that I was eating meat on sly. Uh, <laughs> shit. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Just keep okay. talking. Yeah, it's okay. Anyway, my mom's seen me eat donkey right. meat on TV now, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so. When I decided to, you know, take cooking as a profession, for me it became, I have to be honest to my profession. So I have to try everything. And even now that I'm hitting midlife, you know, I'm, I've crossed 40, I'm, you know, middle age now. Oh, <laughs> no, you are looking... <laughs> Yeah, so don't I say am that. finding don't. myself going back to being a vegetarian. But I just find myself enjoying it more and more. And today, when I go out to eat, my first choice is always a vegetarian. Really? So it's in my DNA, I guess. And the funny part is, when um, I was asked to do this book, I, all, I had this little secret fear in me that I'm doing a vegetarian book. I'm cutting down half the, you know, possible <laughs> clients or future clients because a non-vegetarian, the minute they'll see a vegetarian book, they will not buy it. And the funny part is all my friends who are hardcore carnivorous are buying this book saying, because when the vegetarians come, we don't know what to cook for them. <laughs> so, so the book has done very well and uh, better than I thought it would do. You've had many celebrity clients and India's elite walk through your doors. And if there's one thing that drives me mad about India, it's, you know, the higher you up in the ladder, the, the less you have to wait in lines. So, you know, I've heard that it, at your place, if you don't have a reservation, everyone will just have to wait for a table. I'm actually an inverted snob. If a celebrity comes in, I make sure I go and talk to everyone else in the restaurant but him. <laughs> All right? So, no. But the thing is, anyone who's paying for a meal is a celebrity for me, honey. So. <laughs> You've written three books, anchor two TV shows, you run between all of your six, you've just opened a, a restaurant last yes. week or two weeks yeah, ago. A week ago. But you know, nothing seems to ever frazzle you. In fact, you know, when I scheduled one of our calls, it was the day you were opening your... You called me 20 minutes before the dinner service but was to start. But you yes. said yes, and I was really surprised. I told you, I'm an attention seeker. Anything that's giving me attention, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> okay, but seriously speaking, how do you do it? How do you shuttle between all of these things? I've got ants in my pants. I can't help it. So I just have to be on move all the time. And when there's 15 minutes when I have nothing to do, or if I... I get nervous, I get antsy, I get anxious that I, you know, there's nothing to do. And I'm a genius, basically, so I'm <laughs> <honest> <laughs> to do I'm just... I think, you know, this is the biggest takeaway. I think every, every woman over here, this is a big flaw with women universally, is that we don't give ourselves enough credit. And that's what I love about you. Oh. That's what I love about you. You got it right. <laughs> you see? And we all have to learn from that. I read too many Archie comics when I was young. <laughs> And my favorite and character was Reggie Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the mirror? Where's the mirror? <laughs> so, you know, what makes you a diva? I am a diva. <laughs> that's why I call the restaurant a diva. No, but seriously, I mean, I always wanted to sing when I was young. <laughs> and every sing, you know, teacher who came, not happening. <laughs> In fact, when I finally became, when, when I grew up, if I may say so, and I opened Diva, I even hired, a, you know, another violin teacher to give me singing lessons and violin lessons on sly, and I was already 30. <laughs> and after two lessons, he said, listen to music, don't try to sing. Oh. So Diva actually came because couldn't be a Lata Mangeshkar, so might as well be a cooking <laughs> diva instead. Walk me through a day in your life. Okay. You now these are bad secrets coming out. Okay. Tell us. I wake up late. So. What do you sleep? In late? early days, when someone used to call me at 7.30 and say, I'm sorry, did I disturb you? Were you sleeping? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely awake, no problem. Now, no one is allowed to call me before 11. So, I wake up at between 10.45, 11. Um, cold coffee? And I go first to Diva, 20 minutes, half an hour in Diva. Then I do a full round of all the other restaurants. By the time it's about 3.30, 4 in the afternoon. I go to the gym for about an hour. I know it doesn't show, but no, you know, you I'm a <laughs> chef, all right? So. You look fabulous. <laughs> so an hour in gym. And evenings, I'm always at Diva GK2 when I'm in Delhi. Except when I'm opening a new restaurant, then I have to be <laughs> at the new place. 
and night I come home anywhere between 11.30 and 1.30 and then I have an amazing lover at home uh, who keeps me awake till 6 in the morning. <laughs> it's so called iTunes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so I watch, I watch every soap opera I can watch oh, yeah? <laughs> between 1.30 to 5, 6. So I've, right now I'm doing Borgias. But before it was Scandal, it was Mad Men, it was 24, Homeland, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, Rizzoli, oh my goodness. Rizzoli and Ly guys, I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> Ritu, this has truly, truly been a pleasure. You are such an inspiration. But she will have a quickie with me now. That's right, baby. <laughs> Let's go. All right. <laughs> She's beating me at my own game. <sighs> Mull flushed. Okay. <laughs> what do Indians and Italians share most in common? Family ties. Junk food, love it or hate it? I love it. <laughs> Blackberry or iPhone? iPhone, any day, come on. We are in I 2000s now, not 1990s. I agree, everybody get to the program. <laughs> a simple pleasure. Reading. If you'd have more time, you'd like to? Be a DJ. <laughs> Can you be friends with someone who doesn't like food? Unfortunately, most of my friends don't like food. <gasps> Very difficult. Yeah. Your relationship with India in one word? I just absolutely love it. <laughs> this is home for me. Mm. I was going to say something nasty, but I, we are all like. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take no, the first but it's answer. True. It is true. OK, I really want to know this one. The Indian custom of serving 15 dishes at a party, showing off or being hospitable? Hospitable. I agree. I yes. love it. <laughs> Dare I ask, do you have a cook at home? No, I don't. <laughs> but saying that, my dinner normally is cereal and skim milk. Oh don't say that. That's true. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Kellogg's is a current favorite. Special key. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ritu. Thank you.